Yep. Welcome to another day at Eurobike. I'm on the hunt for more tech, and right now I'm inside the Euro Circuits Quad Velo, which is the most popular bicycle in Germany. The number one bike. All Germans use this to get to work. Pretty cool, isn't it? It's got a door handle. Where's the? Is there a door handle anywhere? <laughs> Oh, there it is. Oh. I'm over on the Orbea stand and I've got something really exciting to show you. They've got a new wheel brand here, which is launched called Okuo. Now, they've got a whole fleet of wheels. They've got the, the road performance ones here. They've got road control, which are gravel ones there. They're slightly wider um, and built slightly differently. And then you've got mountain bike ones on the end. Now, some interesting features on these, mainly with the rims. So you've got a full range of rim depths on the roadside going from 35 mil. Uh, that's what these ones are. They're the lightest, uh, actually really light, 1370 grams a pair for these limited edition uh, top of the range ones. And then you've got 45 mil and 57 mil. Now, on the rims, they are tubeless compatible and they're pretty wide to accommodate the trend for wider tyres. So you're looking at sort of 26 mil is the minimum width you, you kind of want to run on these. Uh, but they're not hookless and they're not hooked. They're, they're kind of in between. And this is the first time I've seen that. They're what they're, they're calling a mini hook, which is exactly as it sounds. It is just like sort of halfway in between. So it's trying to combine the best bits of both a hookless rim and a hooked rim into one. So interesting to see if more wheel brands come on with that. Other interesting detail is these wheels are built on zip hubs. Uh, first wheels I've seen that are sort of commercially built on zip hubs that aren't zip wheels, and they've got Sapim uh, spokes. Now, I'm going to do a free up sound check, actually. Let's crank it up. So these ones are the 35 millimeter ones, the lightest ones in, in the range. And the other cool thing about these wheels is they're manufactured in the Basque region, um, like all Orbeas. So that's really cool. And it's where the Tour de France starts this year in the Basque region in uh, Bilbao. So nice. Kids bikes are hugely important because they're what get the next generation interested in the thing that we're all passionate about. So I'm delighted to tell you about this bike, which is uh, called a Lion. And this is actually a company which Marcel Kittel and Tony Martin are invested in. These are made in Germany. They're not available yet, but apparently from September they're going to be available. Now, there's a few things that set these apart from normal children's bikes. Firstly, uh, a German engineering uh, USP, which is how the frame is constructed. So it's a, it's a thermoplastic uh, frame, which keeps the cost down and also helps uh, reduce the carbon footprint of the bike and makes it actually recyclable, which, which is great. And there's a very unique molding process that creates this, and it actually is able to do it with hollow tubes. It's, it's quite clever. I'm not gonna go into all the detail of it now, but it involves actually cooling the exterior of, of the tube while the rest of the interior of the tube is still a liquid plastic which can then be forced out with cold water. Um, so it creates a hollow tube. Now, there's some really nice features on here for, for children and the big, the big selling point is that it's said to be the safest and most visible bike for a child. So you've got a huge integrated light uh, on the rear of the bike, but then the paint is also highly visible and, and reflective. It's got tiny little bits of, uh, of glass particles in there. So if I actually shine my phone on it with the torch, you can sort of see what I'm talking about. So vis highly visible to motorists and cars and cars uh, LiDAR systems that are built into a lot of modern car now. Um, so yeah, brilliant. Keeping kids safe, recyclable, Thumbs up from me. Just found an incredible five-spoke carbon wheel from a brand called Lavelle. Check this out. Looks proper cool, doesn't it? Um, it it's incredibly stiff, incredibly strong. But I'm, I'm going to do a free hub sound check on this wheel for you. All right, free hub sound check time. There's no noise. That's because this uses a different kind of design uh, where the free hub is, is intended to be silent. So... 
well, we always celebrate loud free hubs and people love them, but some people don't like them. So let us know. Do you prefer a loud free hub or a silent one? Uh, this has got an intriguing mechanism in it. I'm going to show you why it's silent. Instead of standard ratchets or pawls that you get in most free hub designs, this has got what is like a clutch mechanism inside here, which has instantaneous engagement, but also just doesn't make the clicking noises that, that cause a loud free hub. Hmm, interesting. Sally San Marco have got a new gravel saddle. So this is the Regal or Regal saddle. It's a classic design. Many of you will be familiar with it. It looks great, doesn't it? Well, they've updated it. It's got an entirely new construction. And here is the new one. So underneath the body is now plastic and uh, carbon, which adds strength, reduces weight. But the biggest difference that you've got is in the construction and the rail design. So instead of a standard sort of classic rail that you get on saddles, they have this shape rail, which is available in either carbon or manganese. Carbon's a bit more uh, expensive and a bit lighter. Uh, but the rail is now a bow shape or bow shape. And what they say this does is help dampen vibrations off-road, ideal for gravel, um, and also add a bit more compliance, which they've measured. And as a result, it's just meant to be a comfier saddle for off-road applications. It's available in two widths too, um, as are most Celis San Marco saddles, depending on the, the width of your sit bones. And it's available with and without a cutout. So that's the one with a cutout. A bit lighter, uh, that there too. They've also got some new bags, which they've done in collaboration with a designer called Miss Grape. So they're on this really nice Chinelli gravel bike here. Uh, you've got a bar bag at the front. There's then a uh, frame bag, which is available in three different sizes. And then there's a seat pack, which is available in two different sizes. I believe this is the slightly smaller of the two that you can get. But yeah, really, really smart with these little sort of like pinstripe dots on them. S just simple like them. I love the tech in 3D printed saddles. I think they're proper cool and I think they look awesome as well. Um, you may remember this is the uh, SLR Boost. Alex did a great video on how this is made, but they've expanded the range. So you've got the Novus uh, Boost now 3D printed and this, the Watt 3D, which is their, well, the Watt is, is their TT slash triathlon saddle. So designed for TT bikes. I've actually got this one on my Canyon Speedmax TT bike at the moment. And the best thing I can say about it is I don't notice it which is, is what you want from a saddle. You want to forget that you sat on it. Um, but it's got a really interesting feature, which is a, a triathlon feature, but it's cool. Under here, they've got an additional bit of 3D printing just under the nose, which is so that when you rack your bike in transition and it's hanging on the post, it stops it sliding around. It just holds it in place a bit better on the post so you can have a faster transition. Quite like that, it's a good, good little idea. Factor have got a new bike, but they're teasing it so inside this box it says perfect storm it's coming out in the 10th of july so presumably at the, at the tour de france but it's just got a bit of wheel sticking out of each end and that's it that's all i have to say new bike from argon 18 to show you here this is the krypton pro and a well interesting detail about this it's been developed with input from our very own Mark Beaumont, uh, because this is an all-road bike. Now, the guys at Argon 18 tell me that it's primarily focused around the road, but it's equally capable off-road. So you've got massive tire clearance on here for 40mm uh, tires, and you've also got racking points, I can see, so that you can attach uh, racks onto it. And it has this really neat integrated storage solution. If I can just get this off. Oh, there we go. Uh, in here, so you can hide your tools in there. The finish on the bike is really nice. Uh, you've got integrated cables and this sort of gloss black carbon look with nice sort of gold accents and details. So the logo's a little equation for vibration dampening. That's a, a trademark. Argon 18 bikes often have a little equation on them. Uh, but then you've got like this anodized seat post clamp, this anodized bracket holding on the front mech, and the anodized rear derailleur hanger at the back. There's some very practical design choices on this bike, which I wonder if that has, has been some of the input from, from Mark. So things like you've got a round seat post, which is a lot more practical because, well, you could potentially fit a dropper post if you wanted, like that. Um, and rather than having a, a fancy aero bar and stem, which is quite difficult to work on and great for racing, but for kind of general use, maybe not as practical. Instead, you've just got a standard round bar and stem. So easier to work on, easier to adjust, a bit more practical. 
Nice. Um, and in terms of the bottom bracket, it's T47, which if you've watched the previous Eurobike videos we've done uh, this week, that seems like it's a trend. You know, the other bikes that we've looked at that are new all seem to have a T47 on at the moment. It seems like the industry is definitely moving towards that. Uh, that's not all, though. They've got an incredible track bike over there that's going to be at the Paris Olympics. This is the Argon Electron Pro, which is used by the Australian National Federation in the Olympics. So this one has got the Aussie national colours on. It's used by other federations as well. So Canada are using it. The Danes, I believe, are going to be using it. And they're going to be using it in Paris at the next Olympics. This one was first used at the Tokyo Games at the last Olympic cycle. They're still going to use it in the next one. And seeing this track bike in person it's incredible like it is the formula one of, of cycling now there's two schools of thought uh, with with track bikes at the moment in terms of how to make them as aero as possible and that's often to do with the front end and the fork so we see on like the hope lotus bike that's got a really wide fork and takes that idea to to an extreme this one other end of the spectrum super narrow this front fork the blades are so close to the front wheel and it is so narrow, and so much so that the through axle at the bottom um, of this of this fork is just 40 millimeters wide. Another few neat details on it: it's it's got a little uh, recess built in to the dropout on the front fork that's there for the timing chip sensor, so that they don't have to sort of ruin the aerodynamics of the fork and just zip tie it onto the side of the fork, which is what they used to do. This one can be neatly tucked away. I've seen that on the Pinarello Belide, um, our record bike that Ghana used as well. Um, there's a little cover that comes off on this section here. Apparently, this is so that they can store um, sensors and recording equipment um, for the analytics for the coaches when they're on the track inside the bike, tucked away here. So that's pretty cool. I've never seen that before. And the cockpit they have on the bike, uh, you may remember they had a, a cockpit failure from a different manufacturer last time. But now Argon 18 are actually making uh, these extensions for the Aussie National Federation. And they're all completely custom. They're not additive manufactured either out of uh, titanium 3D printed. These are, these are molded. They take casts of the riders. Each one has their own individual extensions. And these are carbon fiber. Really, really nice. Really swanky. Can't wait to see this at the Olympics. One thing to note though, compared to the look track bike we've also seen here at Eurobike, um, the front end head tube that's noticeably wider though. Although the fork is thinner, the head tube area is wider. They're not using as tiny bearings as there is on the look one. Still very narrow though. Just spotted something else really cool on their E119 TT bike or, or triathlon bike, and that's the brake calipers. I've never seen this before, but they've been completely custom designed for this bike uh, in collaboration with TRP to be more aerodynamic than the disc brake calipers that you would fit a standard from an OEM group set brand. So they're bespoke for this bike, but you can just see how integrated they are into the frame. And according to Argon 18, there's a significant watt saving for this when you're traveling at 45 kilometers an hour or 300 watts, which is what you would be sort of aiming to do on a, on a bike like this. But yeah, that's a, that's a cool thing. I'm, I'm all about the gains. I'm over at the road stand and they've got a new power meter. So this is the Twin Power uh, SL. So updated from the previous Twin Power. They're saying now that this is the lightest dual-sided power meter on the market, which is pretty exciting. Um, it looks fantastic, still machined out of high-quality aluminium. There's a few other modifications on it, though, so it's improved in terms of its um, water resistance. It's now dust-proof as well, so it has a, a rating of IP67. If you're an expert on ratings, you'll know what that means, which makes it more applicable for gravel use. And that's possible because they do all different manner of spider options and chainring options. This one's my favorite, though, because it's the, the fully aero option. So it's all covered and aero. It's got a 56 tooth ring. Nice. A couple of other important details. So this little cap removes off here and then that accesses the charging port, which is magnetic and USB. So you can charge it there and it has an internal battery that's good for 250 hours of riding time. The spindle diameter is 30 mil, so 
that that's important depending on what bottom bracket you're running and the other important thing is the available crank length so you've got a choice of four 165 170 172.5 and 175s nice uh, can i have another massive sausage please well fortunately that's it for eurobike 2023 um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments what you've liked seeing the most and also what you've what you've disliked the most as well. Somewhat disappointingly, the lady has chopped up my massive sausage into segments. Um, so I'm going to eat this and then um, head back to England. Love you. Bye. <laughs>